Shall we talk about YC for a second? Yeah. All right. So one thing that we think was interesting about the, the market as a whole is that some early bets are now old enough to be uh, nigh fully mature. And one thing that we keep track of here in Silicon Valley more than we probably should is Y Combinator. Yep. Fascinating and fast moving and sets a lot of precedent. Uh, there's a new kind of leader on the YC winners board, for lack of a better term, and it's Stripe, uh, which is now worth, I believe, 35 billion. 35 billion as of what? A couple weeks ago. Couple weeks they raised ago. the big round. Yeah. 250 million. They're now ahead of Airbnb, which is worth 30 and a half. Uh, but of course, they're going to eventually do a direct listing, which we'll talk about. But I was surprised to see Stripe and Airbnb. I didn't know they were going to be the leading two from uh, the YC universe. Who did you think would be the leading? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think I had a company in mind. I just, I wouldn't have, that wouldn't have been my first thought. Like, oh yeah, YC, of course Stripe is leading. Yeah. Uh, but I guess it's a testament to their success. I mean, they built a platform, for lack of a better term, that brings this ability to everyone else, like Twilio. Yeah. But they're just still private. And I wish they would go public so I can see their numbers. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. What was crazy, they had that pie chart at the bottom. Yeah. 50% of that list is B2B companies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot on this show about how YC is becoming a SaaS incubator of sorts. Uh, and it's interesting to see the data actually show that. Um, another interesting piece of data from that list that YC dropped yesterday, I think, 71% um, of those companies are based in the Bay Area. 63% are based in SF. Yeah. Of the top 101 most valuable, right? Yes, I okay, believe. So, so, uh, or, I don't know, actually. I, I think of the top 101 companies, right. okay, okay. so uh, just under two-thirds are based But I mean, do SF. you think that number varies greatly if you look at the entire population of graduates? Well, if we knew the difference in numbers, we could talk about the difference in graduation rates and the ability to generate wealth. But I'm going back in time in my brain, and I think Michael Seibel said it was roughly about that for the entire company. Yeah. But I mean, it just goes to show that I, I, I guess I'm not surprised by it. Do you encourage your companies to set up camp in SF? So it's really interesting. We have companies in four countries and I think 19 or 20 states. Oh, wow. We have some people who are not in the Bay Area, and it's a cost advantage. Every time they come to San Francisco for a week, they go, I got a month's worth of work done in a week. Yeah. I, went, I met so many people. I learned so many things. I went and met somebody on Monday, and on Wednesday, they introduced me to their friend who could solve this problem, and then on Wednesday, that person introduced me to someone. On Friday, when can I come back? And it really is this like, really unique incubator. We see the same thing in our portfolio. Com in our portfolio the San Francisco-based companies, three of our four top-performing companies from Fund One are based in San Francisco. So 75% 75 of your of best our, performers. Mm -hmm. And are they based there when you fund them, or do they often move here? After they were they all funding? three of those started life in San Francisco, and I expect them to finish life in San Francisco as well. I mean, we talk a lot about Utah and other startup scenes that are doing well. And to be clear, a lot of places in the U.S. and internationally have achieved um, critical mass. Yeah. But I mean, they're still critical -er mass. I mean, we're sitting here in the middle of San Francisco, literally in Soma right now. So, We have the most volatility in our San Francisco portfolio, though. And I think it's because of the, the cost of operating here is this crucible. And if you can't recruit and you can't grow, the cost of operating here will eat you alive and you won't live for very long. Yeah. If you can do those things, you have almost a limitless talent pool. And so for the very best companies, it's probably the best place to be because you can afford it. But if you're a middle tier company, then following your argument, you will struggle more here than you might have in, say, Columbus. Yeah, Absolutely. there's just conflicting narratives right now because I think more and more people are saying, leave San Francisco, it's too expensive. You can set up your company anywhere. You can be remote. You don't need a headquarters, whatever it is. And then yet you see these data points of like, oh, well, actually, most of the top performing companies are based here. Yeah. Yeah. And this whole based here thing is getting complicated. Does that mean where management is? Does that right. mean where 50.01% of the employees are? I mean, I think it was interesting. Stripe's latest remote, the latest sort of field office was remote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, at what point does Stripe not should Stripe not be considered a San Francisco company based on employee headcount? I don't think yeah. we have a vocabulary to talk about San Francisco yeah. headquartered companies where many, many of the employees are not here. I think this also goes back to GitLab, which I believe yeah. is fully distributed as a company. And so they wouldn't have an HQ location. They're just kind of like dissolved among the planet. Yeah, there were four companies on the, the YC Top 101 list that were fully remote. Yeah. Wow. Don't ask me what they are because I forgot. Which were they? <laughs> Uh, but we do, sorry, we do, <laughs> we do have some at the bottom here we want to talk about that had reached this uh, kind of mythical top 100 list very, very quickly. Which companies were those? 
the ones that reached the list really quickly? Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, uh, the ones that are growing fast that are new to the yeah, list. Yeah, so Zero Down, which we mentioned already. Yep. Grin, which is the scooter company, Latin American yep. scooter company. Um, Brex, which we all know. We don't yeah. need to... <laughs> dive in there um and then atrium which is the uh, justin khan founded uh, legal startup oh right right right, right. when did that launch so apparently actually that one surprised me too but apparently it was a 2018 oh, yeah, 18 months isn't that insane yeah what's it worth now i don't know a, a lot. but i mean i have more than a billion dollars i don't Jeez. know yeah i mean it's worth yeah. something yeah all right well good to the good for them and mm -hmm. uh, i do love where we are in the market right now things go so fast there's no waiting around for results it's just capital so in and then you really hope it grows fast it makes our job very not boring. <laughs> I don't know how it makes you feel, but terrified. Terrified. Also, probably it's hard to keep up. It's really hard to keep up.